Okay, it's been two years, but we're finally traveling by plane again. Nothing to worry about. The whole of New Zealand will move into the red setting of the traffic light system at 11.59 p.m. tonight, Sunday, 23 January. No, you've got to be kidding me. Also, once we got to the airport, I realized I forgot the big camera, so I sacked it hard and we had to bolt back to the house, so I was real shaky the whole morning, but luckily we originally left early, so we made our boarding time. Ooh. I feel very blessed. <laughs> As we entered the plane, however, I immediately felt relaxed. It honestly felt like coming home for the first time in a long time. I was even reading the safety manuals, an in-flight menu with deep interest, like, hmm, shall I feast on some wine and olives, or a simple sandwich, perhaps? And of course, I got the window seat again, baby. Life is complete, balance has been restored. Also, being the gourmet food vloggers we are, we got some airplane food of uh, coffee and banana bread. I mean, look at this gourmet stuff, man. Actually, this trip has been rescheduled so many times that I had extra cash because our flights were cheaper this time. <laughs> but not to be cheesy, I didn't realize until the pandemic how much travel means to my general well-being. I don't really mean road trips, but more so any destination that requires a flight. And finally, taking to the skies, soaring upon the clouds once again, I feel like a caged bird that's finally been set free. I won't deny the stress I felt when New Zealand's COVID alert level changed, but let's hope for the best. Friends, let's go to Wellington. It's gonna be special. Wow, we finally arrived here in Wellington. Mind you, it has been almost exactly two years since we have taken a plane flight. It almost feels like we are going to overseas, except it's just the bottom of the North Island here in Windy Wellington, the coolest little capital city. We're spending five days here. It's very early in the morning. I'm almost disorientated. I know some delicious food and some awesome sights are in your future. So let's get some food. Let's go. It's still 9.47, so it is still very much breakfast time. We hit up this place called Robio. It's a snazzy uh, um, sandwich bar for some sandwiches. I got a bacon and egg and cheese. She got a falafel. Hopefully it's good. I really, just really like the vibe of this place. Of course, when you go to Wellington, you know you gotta get a coffee. But it's pretty hot, so I just got a cold brew with a salted vanilla cold foam. Oh, that's so refreshing. I was starting to sweat when we were walking, man. Oh, this is just what I needed. So, you know, because it is breakfast, bacon, egg, and cheese. Oh, oh my god. I mean, this is a classic combo, just like executed really well. Oh, I'm just, I'm just finally awake. Oh, I don't know. I know this trip is gonna be really good for us. It's gonna make me really happy. Oh my goodness. First spot in the mountain. Off to a very mint start. So I got the falafel one mainly because like I wanted something on the nutritious side. So let's give it a go. Look, look how thick it is. <laughs> you didn't even get the top one. It's just. <laughs> That's really good though. The falafel is very annoying. That is a real nice falafel sandwich. Okay, look at that. Yeah, and we're both pretty hungry as well because like in our flight we got free banana bread. But we didn't really finish it. Whack banana bread and whack coffee. Well, you know, it's no, airplane. The, the banana bread was pretty decent. The coffee was okay, but like, I guess. But yeah, we didn't finish the banana bread because like it wasn't really keeping us full. It wasn't worth the calories yeah. either. But it wasn't really worth the stomach space. Yeah. But this is. 
I will clarify the only reason why we got the banana bread and the coffee was because we have rescheduled this trip so many times and when I had to reschedule the flights, the flights that we got for this round of the trip was a bit cheaper so I was like, you know, I'll, just, I'll splurge on some extra legroom seats and some banana bread and coffee in the flight, so. Alright, we're just gonna finish these delicious breakfast sandwiches off. I don't really know what we're gonna do next, but you know, wherever the wind will take us, I guess. Let's go. Oh, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> You know, walking around Wellington, one thing I've always loved about this city is just you, just you just feel the creativity. You just feel the beauty, the art, and the architecture. I don't know, maybe it's just the plant Offlanders speaking out of me. You can see it in the art murals and the walls, the lovely architecture and old buildings. And uh, speaking of art and, uh, and culture, it's the art gallery, the city art gallery. Let's go in, I think it's free. Aw, oh, psych, the art gallery wasn't free because apparently there's a special exhibition from Hilma F. Clint, whoever, yeah, whoever that artist is. I have been here before when it was free, and it is a really good time. You know, it's like a really nice, snazzy, snazzy, vibey art gallery. So yeah, um, very much worth the visit. A new hand touches the beacon. So we just came from the art gallery here, but leading to the Wellington waterfront is the beautiful city to see bridge, a, a tourist attraction in its, in its own right. It was built in the 90s and uh, decorated with ornate sculptures, even some poetry by some renowned New Zealand artists. Honestly, it's just, it's just really, you know, it's just really nice. You can see like all the old buildings from the, from the civic center and then all. Oh, Look at that, it's like a nice old boat shed and the, the beautiful, oh, it's a plane. Where? Oh. There, that's a plane. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I got distracted, but yeah, just, oh man, I, I just feel so relaxed right now, you know, I just know it's gonna be a fun holiday in, uh, in windy Wellington. It, obviously, it's not the clearest day today. To be honest, we're just kind of bumming around, gallivanting, loitering around Wellington before we check into our hotel and at 2. I think we might just grab a bite to eat again first, so I don't know. Let, let's go. We'll see. So, yeah, and Beehouse House Wellington. First time riding a plane in a while. You know, got the beautiful harbor in front of us. Yeah. How are we feeling? Feeling good. I'm feeling very relaxed. Our parents aren't here. Shout out. To them we're gonna go absolutely crazy in Wellington <laughs> we're gonna go crazy the weather is actually kind of nice because I was just hoping it wouldn't be hot and it's not it's cloudy but you know windy Wellington really nice to just walk around the city and you know it's flat it's flat but yeah I just really like the the chillness of the city. Also, it's red light, so there's not a lot of people. Oh yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. Right now it is red light. We're still able to travel, um, but yeah, it just means that there won't be as many people around, which is good for us, not good for the uh, community. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let's not take that comment any further. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Yambi, art truly is everywhere here in Wellington. Yes. So walking time is over. We're just having lunch now at this place called Pickle and Pie. It's kind of like a cafe, but it has like a bit of a New York vibe. And yeah, obviously we had to try their pies. We're sharing that. And we also got like two sides of latkes and some pastrami. I'm very hungry, you know. We did a lot of walking, reached our 10K stuff. So now it's time to eat. So our food just came. It came with everything, including the sides. As you can see, we got a fat stack here to share. We got our pie. I won the the pie battle. We had an option of either the creamy mushroom or some other beef one and I wanted the creamy. So we got that one. The pastrami and then a fully fat piece of lock. I mean look at yeah look at that. And then of course pickles. You know it's in the name pickle and pie. And some I believe it's garlic confit mashed potatoes. So that's pretty fancy. I'm excited. First bite has a bit of tomato sauce in there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> mm. That's pretty good. Creamy mushroom with parmesan is just a really good filling for a parm. And that is real, real good. The pastry and stuff, nice and crispy, good structure. 
you know, has all the elements of a good pie. Love it. You got some mash in there. Come out with some pickle. Mm. And the pastrami is also very good. It's like thinly sliced, smoky, smoky, meaty. Real good. You know, if you ask like 12 year old me, I'd be here in Wellington ordering a green apple ginger and mint juice. Ten-year-old me would be slapping the face for being a for being a hipster. But I don't know. I don't know. I just felt like a refreshing drink because I just had coffee. I'll probably have another one later, so I don't I don't want to have like three coffees in a day. Oh yeah, that's no, that's that's, that's pretty good actually. <laughs> you got the apple. You got the hint of ginger. You got the refreshing mint. Oh my goodness. I feel like I should be drinking this in California along with like an acai bowl or something. This spot is dedicated to Mr. Chunkus. If you if you see their videos, you know I have a big bear plushie and he loves pies. But he, <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't make it. Hey, I'm not getting him. He couldn't make it to this trip because he's too big. He's too hench for our trip. So we have little bear Sheen and Mr. Pumpkin Bear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I when I heard about this place, pickle and pie, the first thing I thought of was Mr. Chungus, my son. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back on the road again after a quick power nap at the hotel. But first, what visit to Wellington is complete without a visit to the Papa? So let's go. Te Papa is always a pretty interesting time whenever we visit Wellington. We started off with a very somber yet epic Gallipoli The Scale of Our War exhibit. The massive sculptures were created by Weta Workshop and the exhibit outlines the impact and sacrifice New Zealand soldiers made during the Gallipoli campaign in World War I. The larger than life sculptures aren't just full of detail but their size also heightens the emotions and atmosphere that these soldiers must have felt. Next up we checked out the nature exhibits next door. Now my favorite part about museums are the things that are very practical, the ones that you kind of interact with. That's why I really enjoyed this one. And I'm sure there's going to be a couple more, like I can, I can kind of see one right now. <laughs> Do not press the red button. Oh my goodness. No, no, Wait, no. No, stop, stop, stop right now. Look what you, look what you've done. You have destroyed the world. Auntie, look at the purple one. Escalators, 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 escalators! Eels. Finally, on the upper floors, we were treated to an exhibit by Rita Angus, who is one of New Zealand's most well renowned artists. We really love the other art exhibits in the toy rooms as well. Some really creative and colorful works that we definitely took our time to both admire and take some gram worthy pics by. So that just about wraps up our visit to Te Papa. Always worth a visit, always very interesting and thought provoking. But uh, all, that, all that learning has, uh, has uh, developed an appetite within me. It's dinner time. Let's get some Italian at Ciccio Caccio. Let's go. So it's dinner time. We're here in Newtown and we are here in Chichio Caccio. Oh my, I don't know. I'm just so excited for this place. As soon as we walked in, even the smell, I felt like I, I, I like walked into my grandmother's attic or something. Like from, like from the decor, the rustic furniture and all the vintage Italian posters. Oh man, this restaurant just screams authentic Italian. I know we're just in Wellington, but it truly does feel like we're traveling back to Italy. 
Let's eat. If you know me, I'm like a hundred miles away from being anywhere close to a wine, to a wine expert or connoisseur. But I guess whenever the whenever the the vibe is there, the atmosphere is there, especially in a restaurant as rustic and beautiful as Chichio Calcio, I gotta get, I gotta get the house red wine. A throwback to our days in Europe. Mm. You know, I'm getting oak. Moss, um, mottled in aged leather, a bit of orange zest the, on the on the back of the palate there, you know. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? No. Uh, First dish, we got a octopus dish, and it comes with potatoes, some lemon, and I think that's arugula. And also, it comes with free bread. We love that. So let's give. That's nice. The texture of the octopus is nice and it's, re it's just a really refreshing dish. Like the flavor is really simple. It's a nice way to start your meal. The more I eat this dish, it tastes better as you go. I think it's because he said it's because of the oils. You know, you can kind of mop it up with the bread too. It's just, just a really good dish. Taste it, taste it, taste okay, the wine. He told me to taste the wine and I dislike wine. But let's give it a go. Especially red. <laughs> Yeah, especially red. Like, I don't even like white. Or just any wine, but... <laughs> don't smell it. <laughs> you know, I took the tiniest sip and I did not like that. But, you know, I, I can... For those who do like wine, I can see why you would like this. I just... It's just not my thing, Ooh but I respect it. Alright, um, divine is an understatement when describing these pastas. They just look... Oh, they just look so beautiful. So I'm just gonna dig into the first pasta. It's called the Bigoli in Salsa Bucatini with slow-cooked onions and anchovy sauce. A Venetian delicacy. You know, we've been to Venice. No, we didn't have this in Venice though, so it's gonna be our first time. Oh my goodness. Look how luscious and oily. Oh yeah, so that smells like anchovies. You know what? Let's let's just give it a taste. Oh. <coughs> Ooh. We're back in Venice, baby. Wow, I adore anchovies as a as a flavor profile. It's just so like umami and punchy, and this just delivers like. Honestly, like, if you look at it, you know, there's like no meat, no anything, you know, it's just like, it looks like a simple oily sauce, but it is just so packed full of flavor, it is, it, it's just insane. Make it make sense. Also, the bucatini, obviously, it has that hole in the middle, so the, the overall pasta shape is a bit thicker. It's got that, that nice, bouncy texture. Oh my goodness. Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna try the other pasta that we have. It's the strozza petit guanciale zucchini. So it has cured pork meat and zucchini. Two things that we love. I mean, we love that little noodle shape. Look at that, so cute. Mix that sauce in. Oh yeah, I'm ready. I am ready. Buon appetito. <laughs> No, I agree. The well-being unit. Mm. Okay, go off. Mm. That is also good. Like they're both kind of the same in like the savory saltiness, but just in different ways. But they're both equally good. That's nice. That's real nice. I love the texture too. Honestly, I don't know if it's because of the wine. I'm having an, an existential crisis right now because of that pasta. But anyway, let's move on to the last dish, the secondi piatti. We got here a classic Roman dish, salting bocca alla romana. Traditionally, it is made with veal, but this one's with pork as pork scallopine, layered with prosciutto and sage, and some kale to the side. Let's dig into it. You see where I live now, right? So I want to be by the water. 
Mm. Oh. That is also really good. Mm. It's really the prosciutto that gives it that umami salty kick. The kale as well. You know, it gives it vegetable crust. Gives you know, gives you your nutrients, and the sauce is so flavorful as well. The pork as well, very very tender. Oh my goodness! You know, this is the this is the the cream the crap. I knew this place was gonna be good. But I didn't know it was gonna be this good. Oh my goodness. And as is holy tradition, ain't nothing going to waste around these parts. Yeah. Ah, look at that. Man, that's just beautiful. The more I eat, the more illiterate I become. Just doing stuff to my brain. All right. Um, I'm officially in a in a in a deep deep food coma, but in the best way possible. I don't know. I really wish you could experience this for yourself. Chichio Kajia just just nailed the essence. The, the heart and soul is there. I feel like I'm back in Venice, in Florence, in Rome, in the Trattorias, in the Osterias. I don't know how else to describe it. I just I really enjoyed the meal, and yeah, may, and may, maybe it was the, the the quarter liter red wine that sent me into this roller coaster of a uh, gastronomic emotions. But hey, all emotions are valid. It's 20, 2022? Yeah, it's it's twenty twenty two people. But I know for sure if you go to Chichio Cacho, you will definitely have a good time. You know, I don't know if it's me, the city, or the fact that I haven't traveled in two years, but man, I just feel like some fragment of my soul has been set free. Being able to travel again, even if it is just to Wellington, all I know is that I enjoyed my first day in Wellington so much. We ate at some really great places today, and if they are of any indication of the quality of the food that is to come, my goodness, we are in for a treat. Anyway, I'm gonna end the video there. Tomorrow we've got another early day. We're going to Weta Workshop. This is day one of Wellington out of five. Stay tuned. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you on the next one.